This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a really easy repair for a gas oven that is no longer heating well or no longer heating at all. This is on a Kenmore gas oven and we're going to be replacing the igniter. So the power off, we're going to be pulling out these racks, and then we're going to take out these two screws in the back. Um, they're standard head screws. You can use a standard head screwdriver, but a lot of times you can just do it with your hand. So you just spin them out. They're in the back right and back left hand corner and they hold on <coughs> the bottom plate and the bottom plate is covering where the igniter is it's pretty pretty easy this will probably take you about 15 minutes we pulled off the bottom plate this is the heat diffuser we had to remove a little screw just one screw and then we got that off and we're now removing two quarter inch screws that hold the igniter in position they're really easy to come off if these don't come off easily, just take your time because they might be a little bit corroded. You can add a little oil to the threads. It makes it easier. These weren't corroded and just came right off. So here's the wires that connect the igniter. And what we're going to be doing is just using wire nuts to put in the new igniter. So I'm going to pull up on the spade connector that hooks to the safety valve, just just this one wire, I just pull straight up to get that off. And the other one, I'll just snip it with a pair of diagonal pliers, make sure the power is off. And then I'll take the igniter, snip that wire, and I'll go ahead and grab the new igniter. And this is a very common generic type that works for many different ovens. So here's the part number. You can get it at Amazon or a lot of different part stores. And I'm just going to use these ceramic wire nuts to join together the old wire with the new wire that comes with the igniter. I have to strip back the insulation on the wire by about just about a quarter of an inch is great. And then I'll put the two wires together after I strip it and just twist on the ceramic wire nut so it's really tight. These ceramic wire nuts are great because they can take a lot of heat and they don't melt because they're in that oven cavity. So I'm going to twist it on really tight and I've got one of the wires done already. The other one is inside the oven so I need to go back and strip that wire a little bit and then I can connect it. So I'm going to strip the wire that's inside the oven and I'm going to hook my igniter wire to that and I'll put my ceramic wire nut on there and just twist it on really tight. I'm almost done. This is a, actually a really fast repair. Very common problem on gas igniters that are in gas ovens that the, ga the gas igniter just kind of wears out over time and doesn't heat up as well. So I'm going to put in the two quarter inch screws that hold it in position. And don't do these too tight because they sometimes are kind of brittle and they can break. Just take your time nice and slow. And this extra wire that I have, I'm just going to push it back into the oven cavity to get it out of the way. And I'm putting the spade connector back on the safety valve. Got all my connections done. I'll push those wires into this little, this little hole here in the firewall. Get them out of the way. I have the broiler drawer pulled out a little bit to give, them, give me more room to work. So I'll just push that back in when I'm done. Get the broiler drawer pushed back in. I'm going to test it. So I'll press bake and then it asks me how hot. I'll go 350. I'll press bake again. I can hear it click so I know it's getting power. And then the igniter should start to glow brighter and brighter. When it's almost yellow hot, it'll let gas flow into the venturi, into the burner tube, and it'll ignite that gas should be within about 60 seconds. A worn out igniter would take longer, but a new one should be pretty fast. Let's 
It's really, really hot. There we go. And the gas came in, it ignited it exactly as it should. Nice blue flame. So now we'll just put it back together. We'll put the heat diffuser back on. There's a little bolt that goes through it and we'll spin on the nut, get it tight. So you can give it a little turn with the pliers to get it tight. This helps to spread out the heat, give you nice even baking. Put the bottom panel back in. So I'm going to use a, like a 45 degree angle position. I'll bring the front lip in first and then I'll just set it down. I'll put in those two screws that hold it in. Kind of long screws, so a lot of threads, but it just takes a little bit, a little bit of time to spin them in. If they're not going in easily, you can put a little oil on the threads. A lot of times, ovens, fasteners get a little corroded, and they don't move as well as they should. So it's not a bad idea to put a little bit of oil on them. You can use any kind of oil, like vegetable oil, olive oil, three-in-one oil, anything that would lubricate it. Put the racks back in. Close it, and we'll give it a test. I'm just doing it at 200 degrees. So the oven heated up real good, real fast, and back in business. So thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe when you get a chance.